following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning from TFNN. Welcome to the May 21st. Terrific Thursday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there had a wonderful Wednesday. Let's make sure you and I do everything we can to have an extraordinary day, a terrific Thursday. Of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I, we can make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. That's the role of life. The role of the markets is for the bulls and the bears to toss things at us. We'll go take a look at the markets. We'll take a look at that in intraday time frames daily time frames, weekly time frames, whatever it is that you need, because I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. Now, I'm here to serve you. If you'd like, give us a call at 877-927-6648. Or internationally, you can call us at 727-445-1044. We'd love to hear from you. This is Terrific Thursday, of course, none other than Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we got Dow futures off eight points, trading at 18,247. S&P futures down a point, trading at 2121. And a tick, you've got the NASDAQ futures uh, off six and a half points, trading at 44.99. U.S. dollar index is uh, kind of flat, down uh, three pennies, trading at 95.47. We'll go take a look at the uh, currency pairs out there. The pound is on the move this morning. Goldilocks is back up five bucks. It's trading at 12.03. Silver is flat, trading at 17.10. Light sweet crew a little rocket ship this morning up a buck, nearly one and seven tenths percent. That's trade at sixty dollars. Even Stephen out there, you gotta like that. If we take a quick peek across the globe, let's go see what took place overseas last night. Over in Asia, a little bit of a mixed bag out here. You had the Hang Seng. That was up 87 points out there, uh, about 2%. So that's not a, exactly a mixed bag. What the uh, Hang Seng is uh, doing, um, we're looking at the Shanghai. Well, I'll tell you what the Hang Seng is doing when I get to it. But if we take a look at the uh, Shanghai, one of the things that we did notice here was this day, April 28th, was a uh, key reversal session out here. And that says that that high is very important, 4791.53. You close at 4742. Looks to me like that high will get tackled. Any close above that sets up an A to B equals CD to the upside inside of the uh, hang inside of the Shanghai Shanghai yeah, I'll get it I'll, I'll figure it out Shanghai out there if you want to know where that uh, price movement would take you to the conservative A to B equals CD to the upside inside of this indice would take you up into the uh, price range of about uh, 57 34 maybe 61 26 out there it's got a clear 47 91 53 in order for that to potentially come to fruition now let's take a look at the Hang Seng not really that much of a big a deal right back a quarter of a percent off 61 points but let me see there were two two stocks yesterday let me see if i can uh, pull this up on my phone i meant to just take a quick note of it I was reading about it earlier this morning first first energy h-a-n-e-r-g-y and then uh, golden i think it was golden uh, uh what's well, not golden week that's for golden financial holdings let's see yesterday last night plunged more than 60 percent on the hong kong industry now one might say that that was kind of incredible, um, which is which ordinarily something that's falling. So we've seen that happen inside the market. But you don't typically have stocks falling 60 percent. I don't believe you do inside of uh, Hong Kong. Now, here's the deal, though, with regard to this stock. I don't know if it will hit the tape or if I'm the only one that's actually mentioning it uh, here today. Uh, but what I did notice when I looked further into this company, I believe it was this company, that uh, that there were 16 traders or some I don't see it here handy right now, but there, there's something like less than 20 
Less than 20 groups held 96% of the stock out there. So I don't know. In any event, let's just take a look at the uh, Hang Seng, see what it was really doing. The indice itself last night, no big deal. Just really moving sideways. Yeah, pulled back a little bit, but no big deal. Why it continues to consolidate up at these highs, work off that overbought condition out there. Quick peek at the uh, Nikkei. The Nikkei, everything was on go last night, but then came off of its highs. You know, in essence, uh, we've seen two sessions here where if we take a look at the, you know, the, the bodies, the, these candles here look fairly innocuous but if we start to get several of them while we're up at this resistance level that resistance level inside of the Nikkei it's right here it's the top of the April 23rd swing point we can see that that level has been under attack at 20,252 we've now had two candle sessions in a row narrow bodied candles out here high wave issue style candles just means the market has really lost its way up at this resistance of this uh, most recent swing point but you can see here that price interest session moves higher and then gets sold off and we see that that closes towards the bottom of the uh, candle out there. You get several of those. There's actually a meaning behind it, which is, hey, I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to go ahead and make it up this time. That says some kind of retracement or something else inside of the Nikkei. The Nikkei is the only one that's got any kind of message as to that effect. Not bearish. But it is uh, sending us signals, smoke signals out there uh, that you've got to be on guard. If we take a look at what's going on inside of the uh, DAX right now, the DAX up nine points. No big deal out here. If we take a look at the uh, DAX, really, if you take a look at those two candle sessions, kind of neat. Because it's really just the opposite to a certain extent of what we just looked at inside of the uh, Nikkei, right? You can see where interest session, it's had pushes lower. But yet, by the end of the trading session, price has been able to push higher. These aren't hammer candles or anything along those lines. They're not any, they're, at this stage here, they're not anything um, to, uh, to speak of. But we can see that the uh, buyers, when it comes to the DAX, are really still in control of this industry. And they really got in control if we take a look at the descending price channel, which it broke out of with a wide ranging bar. That was on May the 19th and just continues to uh, track uh, sideways at this stage, waiting for everybody else to giddy up and go. And giddy up and go. We take a look at the uh, FTSE. The FTSE right now is up four points, uh, just continuing its gradual climb. The FTSE, really, all the hard work, all the heavy lifting inside of this indice is just simply making sure that it stays above 69.50.60. That's the level it's trying to break out of. That's the level that's held as resistance since 1999 out there, and it's trying to break above that. Now, let's go take a look at our markets. Not a whole lot of movement as we speak right now. Dow futures are flat. What does that mean as we take a look at the uh, daily contract? contract for the uh, futures contract for the Dow. Well, look, you've got a 18,188 is the uh, magic number out here. That's the high from March 2nd. The actual intercession low that we've seen here this morning so far has been a price point of 18,197. Has not gotten back to 188. Does it have to? No. But this is really a consolidation line as well. And so you like to see a price come back and test those areas and then decide that it wants to stay out of the consolidation. Here's what we know. There's really no real significant uh, resistance inside of the uh, Dow, at, at least of the Dow futures as we take a look at it. Now, the Dow futures, yeah, really no significant uh, re resistance inside of the uh, Dow futures. Well, we could call it actually the high here of May 19th because yesterday was a bearish engulfing candle that says hey resistance becomes the high of those two sessions that would be 18 334 but not any real significant uh, breakdown nervous breakdown anything along those lines as we speak just yet that's looking at the daily contract for the Dow if we go take a look at the daily contract here for the Russell 2000 let's go see what it's done it's been doing all the heavy lifting here lately but if you take a look at the futures contract it too having these uh, two high wave ish uh, candle sessions out here their meaning is that just simply the uh, Russell 2000 has lost its way on the way up. Now, it's lost its way on the way up as it's gotten to, what, that 0.786 retracement level? Uh, very close to it. 1262 and a quarter would be the number. We've actually seen only a high of, well, I would tell you, if I had that uh, data window turned on, we've seen a high of a 1260.40. It really qualifies as completing that move out there. But that does not say that it can't go try to test the uh, 1262.28, maybe even the low just needs to get up to 1260.70 just simply to tag the April 15th swing point. Remember, any close inside that swing point says you can go test the highs, 1277.20. That's the message of the Russell 2000. If we go take a look at the message of the S&P futures, the ES Mini out here, what has it done? Well, number one, 
It's above the uh, consolidation level set back on February 25th, that swing point, at 2109.75. Has not been able to, uh, cl it closed above 2119.75, the B point of a potential A to B equals CD to the upside. Actually, uh, we're above that level right now. You're at 2121.50. So actually, that, that B point has been tested and rejected uh, several times here. So this says that the uh, ES mini can easily run to 2143.25. Unless it decides to get back inside the lower part of its range, 2109.75 out there. Uh, that is its message. If we take a look at the message of the NASDAQ out here, the NQ, what is it doing? Well, it's really above, um, you know, a version of its 200-point consolidation up at the 44.73 range. Of course, price uh, failed uh, to uh, stay with inside that uh, breakout area. It came back, made a 0 .68, 0 0.618 retracement level. Let me do this here. Let me delete this uh, because if we take a look at so let's go take a look at the Nikkei. We done the Nikkei. How about that? Let's go take a look at the NQ out there. You can see why one can get confused. Makes actually a 0.786 retracement from low to high. And that says that there is a possibility for an A to B equals CD run to the upside. Now, I don't believe that is the case and that's what's going to occur out here. But hey, what do I know? If we take a look at resistance inside of the uh, NQ out here. There really isn't any. It's just maybe trying to get back here, test that swing point from April 27th and move higher. But there's no reversal signal out here on the daily chart for the NQ to uh, speak of. And if it does decide to go ahead and make an A to B equals CD to the upside, well, uh, I've got to give you that price point, but I have to make sure I add that study. I don't know why that study's not turned on. There we go. Now it's turned on. Okay. All we were doing was, and if we take a look at that, uh, what does that give us? Well, you've got, we'll just take a look at the small one. The small one says, 4618. There's a larger one out there as well, but we'll give you the 4618 price projection. So that covers our markets. It is. We are coming into a holiday. Let's go to the beach. I tell you what. Uh, you bring the. Uh, you bring the. Uh, you bring whatever you want. I'll bring the beers. I'll bring the towels. I'll bring whatever it is that you want. Let's just go have a beach day here at uh, TFNN. Doesn't that sound? We'll get an early start. We'll get a start before all those folks that are heading out to the Hamptons get their start today. I think that would be cool. We ought to do it live from the beach at TFNN. I don't know how much work we'll get done, but hey, I know one thing we could do. We could ride the Chapman Wave all day long if we were at the uh, beach. Now let's go take a look at what's going on inside the uh, current pairs out here. Let's go take a look at the euro versus the U.S. dollar out here. What do we know about it? Hey, as we speak right now, we know the euro tried to break through that rising, that descending price channel. We actually saw a breakout of that uh, level. That was back on May 14th, May 15th as well. And then what did we see out here? We saw price moving higher, does it with less relative uh, strength out there, gives you a, a bearish engulfing candle, gets back inside the descending price channel. The message here inside the euro is it wants to move lower. Now, if this starts to uh, pull back, that says the euro will get weaker. The U.S. dollar index will have no choice, no choice other than to get stronger out there. In order for that message to really change, you're going to need to see the euro break back above this descending price channel. It can do it, but there is no message so far that that's what it wants to do. In fact, the message is it wants to retrace further. It wants to pull back even further out there. Now, I didn't catch John Logan's show today as I was preparing for some other things, but I thought he said that he was uh, trying to short this puppy. Hey, you got that short message out here after that trading session on May 18. Steve Rhodes with TFN and we'll be right back. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. 
trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, not much going on in the uh, free market here from the uh, in this, from the futures contracts uh, standpoint. Uh, relatively flat, and maybe that's really what we should be expecting all day today, all day uh, tomorrow. Just kind of a narrow banded uh, trading range that'll make uh, that'll make. Remember, we used to uh, maybe you gotta always be careful what you wish for, right? There was a few days. I was last week. I think we were starting. To, maybe I was starting to complain. You were starting to complain because I could hear the voices coming through the speakers out there about the markets being up 100 200 points one day and then down the uh, next day remember something good for the bears for a good day or so good for the bulls a day or so and now really got something that's not even good for either party out here you know we just simply want some real movement inside of the uh, markets definitely 2015 has been a uh, an interesting market to navigate we took a look at the euro u.s dollar let's take a look at the euro versus the uh, japanese uh, yen out here take a look at that currency pair see what it's doing now it came down in uh, tested its TAS market profile low. Did that yesterday, found some support there. Trying to bounce here this morning, but it's given up some of those uh, gains out here. Uh, so it too, it's got a little key reversal session out here from May 18th. Uh, just like the euro versus the US dollar index, that sets up a, a significant level of resistance. Uh, if this currency pair wants to uh, pull back, which I suspect that it does, um, maybe that's really the currency pair that's given us a signal as to what the markets are going to do when it starts moving 
in one direction or the other. Well, if it's going to be moving lower in the currency pair, our markets ought to be moving in that direction as well. Quick peek here at the uh, Great British Pound. What do we know about it? Still has that A to B equals CD pattern that is in uh, play out here. It's had a couple days of retracement, but it wants to get up to that buck 60 level. Actually, quite frankly, I'd make the case that it wants to get to a buck 63 out here, but it's going to have to clear that 158 ish range out there, but still got that A to B equals CD to the upside. A strong move inside of the Great British Pound versus the U.S. dollar. A quick peek in on uh, Goldilocks back four bucks right now. Gold, as I have mentioned to you, even to the chagrin of many out there, has not impressed me has not impressed me at all for quite some time. In fact, I personally can't get a uh, take on what uh, gold really wants to do out here because first we have seen for a period of over a month uh, really narrow banded closes. Most of the closes have been within $10 of each other. Uh, we've seen a couple of uh, we've seen a couple of days where things have gotten out of hand, so to speak, and we've seen a close off of the uh, range, maybe about $20 off of the midpoint uh, in one direction or the other. But in the case of gold, can't clear the 1224 area, can't, can't clear the 1180 area. If you take a look at what the uh, commercial traders are doing, the CFTC, they're ambivalent. You know, at one point in time, they were highly uh, net uh, short, and they came off of those positions, but not to the extent to get highly net, less net. And really, when they come off their positions, it's really a matter of using terminology, less net short, because they're really never net long in the uh, case of uh, in the case of the uh, large commercial traders out there. Uh, so all we can say, you and I, we just look at this chart and know that there's a, a range inside of gold that's between 1180 to 1224 out there, and that's what's going on with it. If we take a look at what's going on in the case of uh, silver, in silver's case, you know, it completed that 1 to 1 1.6, when A, or completed an A to B equals CD pattern, actually completed a larger 1 to 1 is my recollection. If we take a look at that, that's the low down here on March the 11th. The high out here on, we'll use March 26th, and then the uh, B point, C point down here on the trading day of April 24th. So you can see, you know, it completed that uh, 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, and then that wide-ranging bar. Uh, markets don't end on wide-ranging bars, either the upside or to the downside. So uh, we've seen two pauses over the past couple of days. I don't really think, uh, well, go, oh, look, silver clearly has resistance now at the top of that April 18th high. 1775, you clear that, and that would be a bullish message message inside of it. If we take a look at uh, Texas tea, light sweet crude, up about four right now, trading out at $60.02. What is it doing? Well, you know, after that strong move off of the uh, March 18th uh, low out here, we know that it uh, broke through to the downside. We know it broke through its rising price channel. Let's just take a, a trend line out here. We'll go ahead and just make that a, a white line. Why? I don't know. But there's your tr there, there, there. I guess, you know, we could really make that, excuse me, as the case as the uh, trend line. So it broke both a price channel and a trend and it did it with a wide ranging bar here on may the 19th price now really just coming back into that uh, trend maybe it spikes the resistance of its taz market profile high at 60.95 before giving it up now nothing bearish about this to a certain extent and it really in order for it to truly get bearish you have to reject this trend line and then uh, make an a to b equals cd down into the 53.63 area that's what's going on inside of texas t moving to the upside this morning you got bluebird bio salesforce.com best buy Omnicare, Trina Solar to the downside. You've got Advanced Auto Parts. That closed at 149 Right now, she's trading out at 144 off 5 bucks. Lumber Liquidators, that's uh, moving to the downside. NetApp, Bruker, Corp, and Dollar Tree also moving to the downside. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're like me, you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity, as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes. And you can rest assured that Everbank has spotted this opportunity too. In fact, they have just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Futures Economy CD. This is a CD that could really deliver, but you only have until June 11th to take advantage. Consider the facts. If the future economy's currencies beat the U.S. dollar over the CD term, you'll get all of the upside at maturity. And should they lose, no worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you get back 100% of your deposited principal. Don't miss out. The June 11th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar is ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow up 22 points, straight at 18,263. S&P up two at 2124. The composites off four and a half points. She's traded at 5,067. Russell 2000 is flat, traded at 1257. DAX off 25 points. The FTSE's down eight. Gold's off three bucks. Silver's up two pennies. Lightsweed crude up about a buck right now. Bluebird bio lead in the charge. The upside up 16%. Amazon up eight bucks. Eight uh, sales force up three. Netflix up a couple. Shake Shack up four. Yoku Tudo. Uh, up about three bucks out there. Best Buy up a buck sixty-seven to the downside advance. Auto parts off about six bucks. Uh, Lumber liquidators down four. NetApp off three. Booz Allen Hamilton off three bucks as well. I um, have a request here. Says uh, Steve, it appears transports are getting ready to roll over. Could you look at the transport index and tell me where you think it can go to? So let's go take a look at the uh, transportation uh, index out here. 
as we take a look at it right now, it's trading at 84.9856. What can we see out here? And as far as first, let's take a look. Let's try to answer the question. Where do I think it can go to? Let's just take a look at uh, normal at normal uh, retracement levels out here. So let's go from the low back here for the transports, October the 15th. That's going to be the low right out at the uh, 7,700 and a bit of change. Let's come all the way up here to the high that was put in here. That's that little shooting star on November 28th. What we can see is that price is below the 0 0.382 retracement level. 0 0.382 retracement level was 86.9530. So the next logical spot for the transports to uh, head to is the 83. 15 area at 8315 that's your 0.618 retracement area so that's your first logical uh, spot we can see that the transports have also broken through come on don't work with me work with me have broken through basically a line of uh, support which was established back on december 17th that low was 85.80. That area was tested a couple of different times and held. It finally gave way yesterday. And it gave way yesterday with a wide-ranging bar. Markets don't end on wide-ranging bars. What does that mean? That means that price is uh, likely not over to the downside or you, or you shouldn't expect a big reversal is really what it should mean. Now it can stall for a couple of days and that's it. Or it can continue lower. But the first, uh, the first projection one would look at would be the 83.15. Now, the danger here with uh, the wide ranging bar coming through the 83, 85, 80 area is that there's really no floor out here of support. There's no swing point until you get all the way back down to the October 15th level. So it's not out of the question to keep uh, the 7,700 level in place. So that's one way to take a look at it. I'll also take a look at the Dow Jones transports. Uh, let's go take a look at it uh, this way here. This way, what do I mean by this way? Let's just take a look at some uh, Chapman wave counts out here. And let's start with that that high, that little shooting star, reversal signal, just the opposite of the hammer. And what we've got is multiple counts, you know, because you have multiple waves coming in to the shoreline here. And that's really what it is that we're counting. Now, what I can tell you is that not off of that uh, November 28th high, but coming off of this high out here on February 25th, that at this stage here, there's a potential that we're in wave number seven, that seven inning stretch out there. So if we're going to see a reversal inside of the transports, uh, it won't be today necessarily, but it could be coming to a theater near you out there. And that's really something at least to be paying attention to. We'll really want to watch a candle configuration out here. So it's kind of interesting because, you know, we come back from this holiday break out here and you've got the theory behind the transports. Are they telling us one thing versus the indice? And they very well may be telling us that. But they're also getting down towards the bottom of uh, wave patterns out there where you can oftentimes see reversals out here. So, and that's the actual thing that is more perplexing to me if we were to try to, if you wanted to go ahead and make the analogy that as go the transport, so go the indice out here because the transports have given it back quite a bit, we'll call it, versus the uh, Dow, which is still up near its uh, highs out here. So I don't know that if that's the belief that you have, that as go the transport, so go the indice, that right now is a time to get too exuberant to the uh, downside out here. You'd wish that you didn't see, I would say you'd wish that you didn't see some of those higher level wave formations that are out there inside the transport. So that I hope, I hope that helps out our listener here with regard to the transports. And then, you know, you can go take a look at the IYT and go take a look at FedEx and UPS and a couple of others, maybe to give you some other clues or some better clues out there with regard to what it is doing. So that was the uh, Dow transports. Let's go take a look at some uh, equities here that are moving and grooving in the marketplace, grooving to the downside advanced auto parts now they were out with numbers looks like they missed their estimate uh, revenues here were sales were about 3.04 billion versus 2.97 so you beat the uh, prior year's first quarter uh, net income looks like that was up as well. So they just simply missed estimates, and they're paying the penalty this morning. But how big of a penalty is that going to be for advanced auto parts? I don't know. Let's go see what it's pulling back into. It's got this uh, day from back here on November the 6th where it gapped down. 
uh, gap down and opened up at a price point of 138.50. That was after the day before closing out at uh, 149.37. But nonetheless, people piled back in inside of this equity and took it to the upside and made a higher high. In fact, it made that higher high back here in the trading day of February 11th, all-time high. And then what did it do that very next day? Went ahead, and that was after an earnings uh, release. Went ahead, and or at least it says it was an earnings release out here. This was back on, wait a minute, this was back on uh, February 12th, or March, April. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, that would make sense. Sorry, I just had to do that math calculation in my mind out there. And it also gave it up on earnings on the, that trading session with volume. Today, what we're seeing the same kind of pattern that we saw back here on November 6th. Looks like there is an appetite for buyers, quite frankly, inside advanced auto parts. Every time that there is selling and people want to dump and get the heck out of Dodge, uh, there are folks that are just lined up and ready to roll right back into advanced auto parts. Right now, trading at 147.49, and that's the uh, leader to the downside out there. Well, Lumber Liquidators just jumped into the fray. That's off four bucks right now. Lumber Liquidators, let's go see what it is doing gapping down out here the stock of course looks nothing more than horrible out here let's take this uh, look at this on a longer term time frame get a feel for where lumber liquidators is coming to it's moving all the way back down to the lows back in 2011 into the 14 dollar range area now here is a stock that fall that fell from grace that's for sure it was up at the 120 level and there's still people that are holding this i'm sure at 120 that all the way down were wondering should i sell should i sell should i sell and finally Finally, now you've got the old uh, bury your head in the sand because you know you're at 21 bucks and somebody's saying how low can it go? Stevo says, well, it can easily go down to about uh, 13 bucks or so back into those uh, swing points from August 2011 or so, and you're at 21 bucks. You know, do you really want to take that ride as well? That is on lumber liquidators. We got Brewbaker. No, it's not Brewbaker. What well, Brewbaker? He was from what? Uh, walking tall. Was that it? Carry a big stick out there? Was that the? Uh, oh boy, that was a lot. That dates. That dates me just a tad right there. If you go back to uh, Bruker though. dot com, B R K R is a ticker symbol. That's off uh, thirteen uh, percent out here. Fourteen percent right now. Yep, Brew Baker. If we take a look at uh, Bruker though, this thing is a. Uh, it's a weekly chart. Let's go look at the daily time frame out here for this equity. See what it's doing. Gapping down this morning. Let's go see what it's going to move into. Well, you got this high volume gap down from November the seventh. That should be the target area, 1863 to 1726. You're at 1911 right now. One million shares already this morning, so you're coming into that swing point with volume. Suggests that the low ought to be taken or a little ought to be tested out there. That's on a broker, B, a broker corp, B R. KR being the ticker symbol. To the upside, upside or absurd, however you want to take a look at it, to the upside, you've got Bluebird Bio Inc. That's up 17 bucks. What do we have going on out here? I don't see what's going on inside of uh, Bluebird. Nonetheless, let's go take a look at it. Gapping up, uh, this is the uh, second uh, real gap here. This thing had a significant sign of strength back on December the uh, 9th. Has never looked back. That was a sign of strength that came off of the uh, low the prior day. It closed out at about uh, 48.89, you're at 182.45 since December of 2014. You talk about being a stock picker's market, man. You pick that stock, and you are in really good shape out there. That is a ticker symbol B L U E. Blue skies all the way. You got Amazon.com up about nine bucks right now. That's up about uh, two percent. Amazon.com is going for that high volume high out here from April 24th. That's going to be in the range of. 439 to 452.65. It just needs to clear its TAS market profile high. That's at a price point of 434.11. You clear that, and Amazon ought to go test the 452 area. Amazing Amazon. Salesforce.com. CRM is the ticker symbol. That's up four bucks, up about five and a half percent out here. This thing also has that high volume high. Now, I think that that came on that day where the rumors were floating that uh, Salesforce was uh, looking to be, or uh, maybe it was Microsoft was looking to, to buy Salesforce. I don't think Salesforce was looking to buy uh, Microsoft, but it was the other way around. Nonetheless, uh, that high volume high, we won't remember. We won't we won't know why years from now we take a look at the stock chart what that high volume high was all about we're going to say that was a breakout uh, unless you really have a great memory out here nonetheless we ought to see the 7846 level uh, get tested you're trading at 7410 as we speak right now that is in salesforce.com you've got the yoku tudo 
Is that how you spell it? Is that how you actually pronounce it? It's up 16%. Uh, Yoku, Y-O-K-U, is the uh, ticker symbol. They had a loss out here in uh, Rembi in Chinese currency of 2.67 versus $1.05. So they're widening that loss gap out there. Nonetheless, they're getting rewarded for doing so. This thing moving to the upside out here has some nice uh, volume in it so far this morning. Two million shares. Let me go see what is this thing doing here. Let's uh, take a look at its highs. They're all the way back here. On March the uh, 6th, uh, that's up at the uh, 37.74 range out here. Change in trend for sure. Nice little V bottom that this thing has uh, formed. If we just take a look at retracement levels from high down to the low out here, we're going to see that it's headed right now to the 27.93 area. That's your 0.618 retracement. Uh, this is a daily chart. Uh, you come into a uh, 0.618 retracement with a wide-ranging bar. Says you want to head higher. 32.30 should not be out of the question for Yoku Roku. What is it? Yoku Tudo type ink out there. Let's take a look at uh, what else do we have moving around out here that we can take a look at in this uh, market that's just really likely to uh, chop around to the uh, for the next uh, day or two. Um, so what do we want to uh, look at? Let's look. I'm just looking percentage wise. How about this one? Prima Biomed. There's nothing Prima or Primo about it. PBMD is a ticker symbol. That's down 29 percent. That's off a buck 70. Uh, we're just looking at this for something and giggles. You know what I'm referring to out there. Take a look at this thing yesterday, though. This thing was about, you know, here, here's your penny stock uh, update. Uh, you know, traveling around 50 cents out here uh, for the longest period of time, and they must have cured something. Actually, the market makers were able to push this thing from uh, 50 cents into a high of a buck 69. That's a heck of a move. Well, hey, that's nothing compared to what it did yesterday. They were able to get this stock on a roll. I got up to a high of six dollars and 48 cents yesterday. That's in the last three days. We've gone from basically 50 cents to a high of 6.48. I would say ring the register on uh, that one, uh, Prima Biomed. Uh, it actually has been Prima over the last couple days. Today, not so much. If we take a look at also moving to the uh, downside, let's go take a look at McKesson. That thing has been on a roll. It's off about 1% down 2 bucks right now. Let's go see what it is doing. Did this thing complete any uh, patterns out here uh, that we can see? Um, that we're going to worry about. Nice little stair step uh, pattern out here coming off of these lows back in uh, 2014. The stock still looks to be uh, pretty good. That is McKesson. M C K is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's take a look. I don't want to take a look at Shake Shack. Uh, it does, just simply has not been trading enough. Let's go take a look at Woodward. W W D out there. Of course, uh, not to be confused with Woodward Avenue in uh, the Motor City out there. Of course, nothing like Woodward Avenue. If we take a look at what Woodward, though, is doing. That is the uh, ticker symbol, WWD. That is headed for the 5576 high volume high from July 22nd out there. I have a question to ask me about the TLT. How high can it move to? Well, if we take a look at the, as I mentioned the other day, do I have it here? The 30-year Treasury is giving us the uh, signal that uh, it wants to uh, bounce. It's a signal that it works so well out there that if you trade the uh, bonds, you just have to pay attention to it. Now, again, I'll just do this for, for those of you that aren't familiar with this uh, pattern out here. If we take a look at it, this is the continuous contract, so do not pay attention to that gap that's here. Instead, pay attention to the patterns that are down at the bottom of my screen, which is nothing more than the 14-3 stochastic out here, but it works really, really well on the 30-year Treasury. Why? I don't know. I just know that it does, and you just got to pay attention, because when you have a divergence, meaning price moves lower, but the uh, stochastic is not doing the same, that's a divergence worth paying attention to, as is when price is moving higher, and you get a descending top, so you've got to pay attention to that. And what do we have right now? What we have right now is we had price moving lower, and guess what? We have a nice stochastic oscillator that has been making a nice higher lows out there. So the question becomes, where can this thing uh, move to? And that is an excellent question. First, if we just simply take a look at the uh, TLT and we go from the high to the low, we're going to just simply have to wait till we get back from this breakout here. But we're going to take a look at that first bounce area, the dead cat bounce at 157.04. And we'll go take a look at the TLT and see what it means there. We'll be right back.
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy, you're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, with two minutes to go, let's, uh, let's give, 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 let me get right back to that uh, TLT question. And first, let me point out a couple of things. Uh, if we take a look at the 30-year Treasury, as I mentioned, you know, take a look at the 14-3 uh, stochastic out here. It's a great indicating tool, indicator tool, when you're actually looking at the underlying instrument. You've got to take a look at the 30-year Treasury, uh, whether it's you're looking at the current contract. I say go have the current contract as well as the continuous so you can see the number of times that, are, that it occurs out there. Because as you see, I'll put the TLT up on my chart 
you do not get the same message in taking a look at the ETF that tracks it. You just don't get that message there. So, so that's important for me to tell you. With regard to the TLT, where could it bounce to? Well, I'd have to say that your first indication is going to be getting back towards this uh, most recent uh, swing point area, which is likely May the 8th out here. So, uh, and we take a look at our TAS market profiles. Uh, 122.57 becomes the uh, becomes the point where you ought to see uh, the TLT bounce to at a minimum. It could get higher. It could back it up into the 130 area. I know that is probably going against most traditional thinking out here. But here's how you'll know. You've got to come back to the uh, contract and you've got to pay attention to what happens as price on this 14.3 uh, stochastic happens right around that 50 level, that 50% line out there. That is a key area. In fact, when the uh, can we go back and take a look at the trading show, when this broke below the 50% level, I believe that was back right around April the 9th. At that stage, I said the message here based on these two patterns was that this wanted lower price out there. And that certainly came to fruition. And if you take a look at all the other times when price is able to have, after you have this pattern, when price is able to get back above that 50% level, it goes on and at least makes a move back to the previous swing point. In this case here, that's what I gave you at first. But it can also move higher out there. And it does one or the other out there. So that's the message with regard to what's going on inside the 30-year Treasury. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow. She is uh, off about eight points. It's a flat market inside the S&P, the composite, and the Russell 2000. Holiday trading should be in full force. Folks, if you're off to start your Thursday, have a terrific Thursday. If you're off to start your holiday, be safe, travel safe out there. And I'll look forward to seeing you the next time, which could be in about 10 minutes when we do the second hour of the Trader's Edge. Take care. Have a great day.